I'm Dr. Walters, and I would like to welcome you to week two of Global Culture and Diversity. In week two, we will be reading Manfred Steger's short and quite general book on globalization. Steger addresses a vast array of topics, sometimes in a somewhat superficial way, but he does provide an amazing quick and general overview of the many faces of globalization. Globalization can be defined in many ways. Anthony Giddens, one of my favorites, Oxford Don sociologist, globalization can thus be defined as the intensification of worldwide social relations which link distinct localities in such a way that local happenings are shaped by events occurring many, many miles away and vice versa. Another sociologist, Ronald Robertson, globalization as a concept refers both to the compression of the world and the intensification of consciousness of the world as a whole. David Held, Globalization may be thought of as a process which embodies a transformation in the spatial organization of social relations and transactions, generating transcontinental or interregional flows and networks of activity, interaction, and the exercise of power. Staber notes the basic qualities at the core of the globalization definition and process. Globalization involves the creation of new networks and the multiplication of existing connections that cut across traditional boundaries. It is reflected in the stretching of social relations, activities, and connections. It involves the intensification and acceleration of social exchanges and activities and occurs on a plane, a material plane, but also at the level of human consciousness. Steger then provides a chapter on basic periods of history. One may or may not take exception to his division, but this is a very rich and condensed chapter. The prehistoric period, the pre-modern period, the early modern period, the modern period, and the contemporary period. In the next chapters, Steger gives us a quick run through four dimensions, the economic dimension, the political dimension, the cultural dimension, and the ecological dimension. These are vast topics. He begins with the economic dimension and the gigantic flows of capital mediated by digital technology that have stimulated trade, the migration of markets to cyberspace and the extension of their reach, and the huge transnational corporations, powerful international economic institutions such as the International Monetary Fund, and the giant regional trading systems such as the Euro European Union which have emerged as key building blocks. The political dimension is extremely complex and again one may take exception to many of Steger's key points but he begins with the emergence of the nation-state in the 17th century and poses the question as to whether or not globalization has weakened the power of the nation-state and returned us to a borderless world. Then what is the impact of multinational agreements, treatises, and organizations? This and especially human rights is an area of my contemporary research. And then he asks, is real global governance possible? The cultural dimension poses questions asked by many globalization and culture scholars. Does globalization mean homogenation, such as in the McDonaldization? What is the impact of media and digital communication? What happened to local cultures? One of the items I have added to this course uh, in the cultural dimension uh, concerns the UNESCO cultural heritage sites, which also transects the next 
big, broad topic, or the ecological dimension with global climate change, the potential exhaustion of natural resources, the pollution, and especially the evaluation of parity or equity in the newly industrializing countries and their use of natural, both natural resources and their contribution overall to uh, the pollution of the environment, leading us to the topic of sustainable development. Finally, uh, ideology, ideologies and isms shape the eighth chapter of Steger's book, and these these are huge topics addressing extremely important issues and questions in the topic of globalization, but also uh, pertaining to um, more to broader questions about the governance of the world, uh, free markets and neoliberalism, and the contribution to uh, expanding global inequality. Uh, again, sources that we may look at later in the semester, things like the Gini coefficient or measures of, of inequality within nations to create comparisons. Uh, justice globalism, which has to do with uh, egalitarian ideas and how these might be realized in the global world when all of cons all of sort of basic uh, constitutional legislative authority that's enforceable is relegated still within the domain of the nation state. Uh, religious globalisms. Here I I had a uh, the, probably the most questions about the presentation of Steger's material, but this refers to the mobilization of traditional religious values in the face of secularism and consumerism. And then uh, the, I added to this the expansion of secular ideologies uh, that, again, uh, really dominate a lot of the world's conversation. Uh, finally, in the last chapter, and I want to uh, note that globalization is happening, it's easy to say that we need to get in front of the process and steer the process, but then really who is in charge of the globalization process and who has the legitimate power and authority to navigate and negotiate the globalization process. Uh, it ends with this definition. These transformative social processes must have a moral compass and ethical pole star guiding our collective efforts, the building of a truly democratic and egalitarian global order that protects universal human rights without destroying the cultural diversity that is the lifeblood of human evolution. I look forward to reading what you post this week, and I wish you the very best.